I've been following um, true crime for some time, and right now I'm following the case of Madeline Soto, who was um, ended by her mother's boyfriend at the age of 12. He was a pedophile. He's currently in jail. You can look it up um, for the true crime story. But what I wanted to say about it was that um, there are a couple of things that no one's really talking about, which one is... Where was Maddie's dad in all of this? We know the following, and I'm not going to go over the whole case. This isn't a true crime channel. So if you already know the case, this is what I want to add to it. We know that Maddie's mother was um, suffering from a lot of anxiety or depression and bipolar. She had unstable mental moods. We know that when she had Maddie, with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend shortly thereafter got married to another woman. So how active were those people in Maddie's life? Knowing that the mom was emotionally unstable, there was a grandmother who actually looks very fit and healthy and she was not involved, okay? Where were all the other adults in her life while this groomer pedophile sexually molested her for four years from the ages of eight to 13? And then, you know, ended her life. Uh, I think the murder charges will be coming out soon. A lot of people are saying, where was the mom? Okay, let's talk about the mom first. Where was the mom? Well, the mom had a lot of mental health issues, okay? I do not know why nobody called Child Protective Services. This is just this beautiful, vivacious girl who was assaulted for years and years at the hands of her stepfather who groomed her or the mom's boyfriend. And did she tell her mom? We do not know. But if you read the comments of people who were abused, or I've met women who were sexually abused as kids, and even boys, men who were sexually abused as boys, by the mother's boyfriend. It's usually the mother's boyfriend, or the father, or the grandfather, or the uncle, or the babysitter. There is so much talk about children being sexually molested by strangers that 90% of the child sexual abuse cases are done by someone the child knows, including the rabbi, the priest, the Boy Scout leader. And often it's in the family, the brother. I've known people who were sexually abused by a brother, a grandfather, the mom's boyfriend, um, the father, the father, the father of all these girls. Like often it's the father and they don't tell. They don't tell, this is why they don't tell, okay? Number one, they don't tell because they're threatened. And little kids are scared. They do not know that this powerful person doesn't mean it. If you tell, I'm going to kill your mom. I'm going to kill your cat. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And the kids are terrified to tell. That's why they don't tell. They're terrified. Other times they don't tell because they can see that mom has a lot going on and they don't want to burden mom with one more problem. So they're protecting the mother. Or they don't want to, if in the case it was the brother, I want to protect my brother. I love my brother. I do not want to get him in trouble. Even though he's abusing me, I love him. It gets very distorted. <clears throat> Sometimes they blame themselves because when you're sexually touched, you may have some, your body automatically has arousal responses. And you may get confused about it and blame yourself or think you made it happen. You might blame yourself and be ashamed about it. You might think no one's going to believe you. Or you tell your parents and they don't believe you. So I went over a whole number of reasons. This space, I've never been sexually abused, but I have met many people who have been. This is what they've told me. People who are sexually abused usually grow up to where they want no sexual touch at all or they're terrified. When someone touches them, they get in a relationship, they start crying or whatever was done to them as kids they don't want to do. If they had to suck on grandpa's penis, they were told they don't want to do any blowjobs. They don't want any penis near their face. You know, if they were choked, they don't want anything near their neck. 
If it was penetration, they don't want any intercourse. Sometimes they develop illnesses like vaginitis or cystitis. As their bodies respond to, don't, don't go there. It's not safe for me. Another problem, though, is that... Um, uh, I mean, you have these moms that all the cases I know of these moms, they have mental health issues and they were not seeing what was obviously going on under their faces for years. The mom had mental health issues, so they were either consciously or unconsciously blocking out what was going on under their own faces because maybe they were abused as children. Um, they don't want to believe it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to acknowledge it. And if you tell the mom... She might be like, really? And then she'll check in with the, you know, boyfriend. The boyfriend will deny it. And then the mom will be like, why'd you lie to me? He said he didn't do it because she's emotionally dependent on the man. So she will cite with the man. I once had a guy who was sexually abused in the army tell me that he was sodomized by one of uh, his boss in the army. And he goes, that was really uh, shameful and hurtful. But what was even worse when he went to tell his boss and they didn't believe him, he goes, that was even worse. That was even worse when you're not believed. Okay, so those are all the reasons that kids don't say anything. And they really have no power. They're powerless. They're counting on us to protect them. So in the case of Maddie, where the fuck was her dad? Where the fuck was her grandma? You know, if I had a, if I saw anything like that going on, I would intervene. I would call Child Protective Services and I would raise my grandkid. And I would get that pedophile out of the house. So where were the other adults? Where was her dad? And that's the other thing. Maddie's mom had her when she was 23. She didn't marry the dad, okay? But the dad is responsible too because this is what guys think. Oh, we just spread our seed. No, you're responsible when you get a woman pregnant. You're responsible for that child, okay? I don't know if, he, if the dad ever sent any child support. We just know he was remarried. And, you know, I, I don't know anything about him, but where was he? You know, when my parents divorced, my dad was always looking out for us. He, he was not really, we didn't live with him, but, you know, my mom was, had a business colleague and he would sometimes spend the night, my mom was not doing anything with him, but sometimes when she was out of town, like he would babysit us, you know, and he never tried anything, but my dad was always like, you can't have that man babysitting these kids. You can't have that man babysitting these kids. And we would be like, he's not doing anything, okay? But you need you need someone to watch out for the kids. Maddie had a grandma that was fully functional, the dad and the stepmom. Where were these people? The mom obviously had mental health issues. Where was she? In denial. That's why, you know, where were these other people? The other thing is a more broader thing. These pedophiles are not just riffraff living in trailers. We're talking about, you know, the first time I met a woman who was sexually abused, her father was the president of the University of Kansas. Another one was an English college teacher. Another one was on the city council of a rich Southern California city. Um... Another one, some of these were just like poor people living in Appalachia. You know, uh, I was watching Police Off the Cuff. That's a true crime channel I watch. And he was involved in a lot of these cases when he worked on the New York City Police Department. And he said it's all politicians, lawyers, doctors. You know, it's everyone, firefighters, police officers. There is no prototype for a pedophile. It can be anyone. There's no way that they look. They're often very charming. They often are very good with kids. You know, they're not necessarily snatching them. They groom them and make friends with them. It can be your somebody's brother. I know someone, her brother molested her for years. And the woman I know whose father was um, on the city council, he stopped molesting her when she was 13. Some of these guys will stop when the girl turn, starts developing breasts and puberty because they're like that prepubescent body. Okay, now let's see me switch tracks. The other thing that no one ever has talked about in this so far is how to help these people. And I don't know if you can. 
I don't know if you can. To my knowledge, there's only one program in Germany that had limited results because your sexual map is kind of your sexual map which turns you on. Whether you're like busty women or, you know, women with an ass or brunettes or you're like tall women or you're like curvy women or skinny women. Uh, some guys love mature women. That's in my favor. Some guys like, you know, younger women in their 20s. But the guys that like kids, that's what they like. You cannot change what people like. You can't change a gay person either. But the problem is, okay, you've got all these pedophiles living all over in an area. And um, the sexual predator map, in this case, where Maddie Soto lived, there were a lot of them around there. But what are they supposed to do? Okay, you... Let's assume that some of them want to stop. A lot of them don't, okay? They were like, this is just how they are. But let's assume that a certain percent of them want to stop. They know that this is wrong. They're afraid of getting caught. None of them want to be caught. They want to stop. Where can they go for help? They can't. The moment they would go for help, someone would turn them in. They would be arrested. There is no place for them to go for help. That's a problem. I think that's a problem. Because they should be able to go for help, whether the help is some kind of therapy, whether the help is putting them on some kind of medication to, you know, like a chemical castration kind of a thing. They're not even able to go for help because there is no help. I don't think the help exists. I think they would be judged. I think they would be ostracized. I think they're way too embarrassed to go for help. So what are all these people supposed to do? We have a world full of these people. Okay, how, how are we supposed to stop them by waiting till they do something to a kid? By the way, this Steven, Steven uh, Stearns that did this to her, they're saying that there were probably hundreds of other kids. They don't just start at 30. They start long before and they don't get caught. They don't get caught. So, so in summing it up, I talked about why the kids don't tell. Often they're not believed. I talked about where were the other adults in her life, even the school, the teachers, Child Protective Services, the father, the grandparents, the stepmother. And finally, these predators, uh, what are they supposed to do? Is there a place they can go for help? Or are we supposed to wait till they actually molest or kill a child and then catch them? So those are my, those are my thoughts on it. And, um, you know, in closing, I just want to say, I'm just, every time I see the pictures of that little girl, every picture I see of her, she's just this beautiful, radiant girl just smiling. And I'm thinking, how can she smile when she's been undergoing all this abuse in her home for years and years and years? And she was still smiling. You know? Um, maybe I should say something about the mom. The mom obviously had mental health issues. I know someone who was sexually abused and the parents just looked the other way. They were just like in their fantasy dreamland. Like I see nothing. Like a part of their brain couldn't comprehend because they were also dysfunctional. A lot of these parents are dysfunctional. They have their own issues. So they don't see it. Consciously or unconsciously, they don't see it. They don't believe it, they cover it up, or they're emotionally entangled with the perpetrator. It could be a business partner, it could be a family member, you know, it could be someone's parent. Oh, grandpa wouldn't do that to you, you know. I had, I will just share this, I had one experience with a guy who was trying to uh, do something to me. I think he was just starting out doing things to kids because he didn't do anything very much. But I must, I was under the age of nine. I don't know, maybe I was seven, eight. And I was visiting my grandparents and there was a barn there. And I would go there in the stall by the horses and there was a young guy there. And he would uh, clean out the horse stalls and um, I would always talk to him. He was very friendly. I'm like, oh, he likes me. This handsome older man likes me. Well, one day he picked me up and he took me off to the side into one of the stalls. And he's just uh, held me really tight, just had, held me up in his arms. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I wiggled and wiggled to get out. Put me down. Lass mich runter. Lass mich runter. Because I'm German. And he's like, I will dich heiraten. I want to marry you. And um, I think that 
that was maybe him just starting out with that kind of stuff because he could have taken me off somewhere, touched me somewhere, he didn't do any of that. So I, I think he got scared. I wiggled out of his arms and he put me down. I ran home to tell my grandparents and my grandmother, bless her heart, I still remember that. I still remember this such a warm feeling in my heart that she actually believed me. I'm still so moved to this day that she actually believed me. I was thinking she's never going to believe me. She did. She immediately got up and she stormed out and she went to talk to the people at the place and that she got that guy fired. She got that guy fired. Um, now that was just some guy working in the barn. If it had been a family member, would I have told, what if it had been my uncle? Would I have, to, would I have told my grandma? You know what I'm saying? That was easy to do because that was just some guy in the barn. And my grandma believed me. But what if it had been a dad or an uncle? Would she have believed me? She would have tried to protect them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah. And the guy didn't threaten me. He didn't say, oh, if you tell anyone, I'm going to kill you or kill your grandparents. He didn't do anything like that. So my case was easy. But I just wanted to tell you that that happened to me when I was little. And I that feeling I had of someone believing me. And so when you don't believe a child, you know, and any of you watching this, if you told someone they didn't believe you, that is even worse. Some people say, you know, you finally find your voice and you're counting on someone to help you. And they just make you insignificant. So this case is bringing a lot of nationwide attention on pedophiles, on child sexual abuse. And that's a good thing. Maddie, in her bright light, that's why everyone is so into that case. Because of Maddie, if you look at her picture, she's this bright light. And how could someone do that to her? And what about the mom? And they live in this nice complex in, in um, Florida. And so she's captured the hearts and the interests of people and um, and it's making people aware of pedophilia. And the pedophilia that's likely to occur is occurring in your own home. That's what people have to realize. It's occurring, most of the pedophilia is occurring in your own home. With the perpetrator being a father, a grandfather, a brother, an uncle, the mom's boyfriend. And they do it to boys too. A priest, a Boy Scout leader, someone trusted, someone that likes to be around kids. You got to watch people like to be around kids. They should not want to spend their free time playing with kids. I think that's kind of a red flag. I could be wrong. I don't even know what the red flags are. That would be one more thing. We should have a list of red flags to look for. Uh, that would be another good thing to have. Um, so those are my thoughts um, on that case, and um, I think that children need to be protected. And again, it still takes a lot of emotional presence and capability to properly raise a child to adulthood, and you gotta ha you gotta be all on board, mom and dad. You can't just get a woman pregnant and run off. That father was responsible too for that girl. Everyone keeps talking about the mom. Where's the mom? Well, what the fuck about the dad? Where was he? You know, the dad.